Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Post Perez. It's the April 2024 edition. I am WH Park, and uh, joining me, as always, is Karen, the Empress of Post Wrestling. It's Karen Peterson. Karen, how are you doing? It, it's been a while, WH. I am doing well. Happy Post yeah, well, WrestleMania. Are you, are, you, are you holding up well? You haven't caught in anything from all the wonderful shows you've been to? I went to two live shows, and I watched Mania from the Airbnb. And I know several people, including our good friend Dickie Bird, uh, were kind of jealous of like the fact that, oh, I'm not, night one, I'm not freezing. Uh, I'm not stuck two hours trying to get out of the, out of the arena Ooh. after the arena finished. And uh, like they, a bunch of the, the BDE boys, they, they said they just went to the casino nearby and just hung out there until like the crowds dissipated and they could go home without worrying about traffic and stuff like, and that, I, I finished Mania about an hour later. We're talking with Rich, you know, and then about an hour later, I went, I went to bed and I didn't have to pay for an Uber with surge charges or anything like that. But hey, you know, those guys, I know a lot of those guys, like our good friend John Ceno and, and Brain Davey, they had they had a good time live in both, both nights. And I think night two was better because it was actually not freezing in yeah. the arena. So uh, Philadelphia, great great place i i had a great time so let's maybe we'll just talk about that i went to two shows the stardom american dream show uh at the EC, the former ecw arena the 2300 arena hey, karen have you have you been there because it's a really nice place i have been i've actually been to several new japan shows at that venue especially when new japan strong was at the height of its touring i went to uh, a couple of shows in that exact venue however i have never been in the men's bathroom to take a picture with the ecw mural and it kills me that only the men's bathroom has that because the women's bathroom des deserves to have a fancy mural wall that we can all take pictures with too you know it might have a mural but you know it doesn't have doors ew <laughs> yes so oh i mm. if, if you need to you know do some private there's business no, there's no there's no privacy <laughs> no like you you're kind I mean, of like i guess that's hey, thankfully <laughs> I, I thankfully i i you know didn't need Go to use facilities the house, <laughs> didn't need to use facilities and i was just like whoa there's no doors here on these stalls that's crazy the ladies room does have doors well i'd hope so i, would I hope mean so. why why doesn't the men anyways <laughs> the startup show just broad strokes we we did have a re we do have a review of it me and rich fan up on the cafe, please listen to that. And as a bonus, you can hear about night one in Philadelphia, or more accurately, Springfield, Pennsylvania, as we uh, try to uh, survive in the motel from hell. And uh, we survived, obviously. Both Rich and myself are, are fine. And uh, I will say this once we decided we're not staying in this place, we were fine. But there, maybe there was like 10 minutes. I was like, oh my God. I do not want to, I do not even want to touch this bed. And, yeah. and guess what, folks? That's the only piece of fucking furniture in this room. And when it was brought up to the, the, the front desk clerk, he said, sometimes the rooms don't have rooms. And I don't even know what that means. If you're, if you're, it doesn't even mean the rooms don't have furniture. It's a hotel. It, it, well, <laughs> they say it's a hotel. Hotel. It's a death, <laughs> it's a death trap. But, anyways, <laughs> people, the Parkway Inn on ridge avenue don't ever stay there okay it's 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 a death trap murders i think murders definitely people getting shot there drug deals the mayor of springfield wanted to shut this place down but the owner said go ahead and try that's if you look this shit up on the internet you'll you'll see it all like it's well, crazy anyway <laughs> anyways we've got the full story if you want to know about sneaky pete you want to know about the the, the Eastern European guy asking me if he wants to kick my door in for me. You just have to go listen to the cafe after the stardom American dream review that Rich and I did. You can then hear the addendum. But the, I don't know, we haven't given it a name for it. Maybe we'll just call it some rooms don't have furniture. Don't, don't, I, I, don't I, I, don't furniture. Don't the furniture. room without furniture. Anyways, <laughs> I will say this about the stardom show, like just as an overall feeling um it was fine i don't think it was anything special uh, in no. the sense of like uh anything major happened or um i also didn't get the i i felt i got the impression my just my this is my impression i, I can't speak for anyone else in the building 
but my impression was that they had a good they the the, the, the roster had a good time uh, performing in america at at one of their own branded shows but 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 i think they realized oh we we now have to go do this roh show and we had to do one of the matches you know basically the same i don't know if anyone saw the roh pay-per-view i i did not uh super card of honor i did not watch it so but i saw clips of like just maybe it seemed like certain members of the roster weren't giving it their all as if if uh, you know because they weren't on a brand that they cared about versus their own brand that's just my impression so yeah the the interesting thing about the uh american dream show is that it's their first show since 2019 in the united states that's a standalone show and it comes immediately after losing notably two of the biggest names from their roster with julia and utami both finishing up with the company and going freelance and while it was great they took very much took a new japan strong or new japan of america approach with supplementing the roster with a lot of local talent, which is great because local talent gets local exposure. My frustration with it was that as, as much as I love the AEW talent that was featured on the stardom card, I felt like they were given priority over the stardom talent on their own show. And that doesn't sit well with me when I know the stardom talent, when they go on to ROH or they go on to AEW, they're, they're not afforded this. They're not afforded the same wins as it were. Mm. Um, I am curious. I am curious with uh, Tony Storm how they're they're finally parlaying her history as one of Storm's most decorated foreign wrestlers into the whole um, the whole Forbidden Door era because you know according to her the Forbidden Door is always open and tomorrow night or I guess is it, Collision's on Friday right so uh, it's on Saturdays Saturday so Saturday Rampage night, is on Fridays I think Rampage is all right so on Collision Azumi is challenge or wrestling against tony storm but in a non-title capacity so when i guess now the thing is that when new japan brings stardom talent over for their shows their stardom talent is also going to turn around and probably work aew should right. they be within the same area or in a travelable travelable <laughs> a, tra a, de a decent traveling distance from where they're at in the country at the right. time I'm going to say with regard to Tony Storm, when she came out at the end of the show, after the, the main event of Micah, uh, Megan Bain, um, she was treated, I felt she was treated as the biggest star on the show by the, by the fans, because she is an American television wrestling star now. Yeah. Uh, she, she's, um, kudos to her. She's gotten, she's gotten herself over with this new character, the timeless character. Yeah. Um, but when she's, she's talking about stardom, like this is the place that, that may, there would be no Tony Storm without stardom but it's like this is but you're doing it in character yeah <laughs> you know you're doing it as your kayfabe character and that's not the tony storm that came out of stardom like Correct. you were more a different character when you were in stardom um basically the her wb version is basically her stardom version uh, her storm. nxt uk version was her stardom version her yeah her well <laughs> Once she got over to the main roster, it, it still shifted a little bit. But yeah, who she is in AEW isn't who she was fresh off let's, the British let's, wrestling scene slash start. Let's say uh, the May Young Classic version of Tony Storm is the. I the, love that the, version the, of Tony the, Storm the, so much. Right, so. <laughs> but the, the, I, I do. The, I am enjoying the timeless Tony Storm. She managed to take a very, what some would say, a very niche approach to women's wrestling in a modern era, but. No, I, I I think it's a great character. I think it's one of the most original things that AW done, especially for the their their, their women's division. Uh, but anyways, I I do feel like the 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 match that Tony's gonna do is probably her against Mina Shirakawa, and now Mina Shirakawa is doing some kind of I don't know angle with Mariah May where she's yeah. in love with her. I, I feel here's like the thing. You, <laughs> I feel like you and Rich Fan have gotten the uh, the bulk of my ire over that entire situation. <laughs> I am I don't know why because Mina and Mariah have fought so hard for the last few years to be taken seriously mm -hmm. as wrestlers. Not that they're just a WWE shop girl or not just a pinup idol in Japan. That they they want to prove to everyone that they're wrestlers and they're good wrestlers. I just don't understand how 
everything they've done in stardom is being so rapidly unwound on AEW television with this whatever it is. Right. I mean, I I I think it would be great if you can do uh, like a same sex romance storyline with with oh. wrestlers whether they're men women but like i don't feel that that's what they're doing with this they're doing this to like for for exploitation and titillation and I'm, i i hope to god i am proven wrong i really do for the sake of the Same. people involved in this if, but if i people... i i don't have any faith that that, that i'm going to be proven wrong and i certainly don't want to have a you know to your left moment with this but and i won't say it but like yeah. i i just feel internally like i'm okay three months down the line past forbidden you know two forbidden door past forbidden door like if that's where this angle is is leading to that unfortunately i, I think it's going to do a, a lot of damage to especially i think mina shirikawa you know she, she's she's like really put her got, gotten to a point in stardom where she is like okay oh she can be one of our you know like flagship yeah. talents like she could eventually become like world world of stardom champion I hope I just hope I'm wrong. That's all I'll say about that. And and that's the thing. It's all about the presentation of it. If it if they're going to try and do a same sex relationship, that's fine. That's wonderful. The problem is that the way that they're being presented, it comes off as very highly fetishized approach to a lesbian relationship for the yes. sake of of getting like. I've seen people say, well, no one knows who she is because she's only been on Ring of Honor, but this is a great way to get everyone's attention. I'm like, but are you paying attention to her as a wrestler or the fact that she just kissed a girl on TV? Because there's a difference between that. And as a, as, you know, and as a fan of these women, of the promotions that they've worked in, it's frustrating to watch. Of course, yeah. I mean, I share the same sentiment. I'm not, I, I have little, little hope that this is going to turn out to be a positive thing. For yeah. either of them oh but it'll draw the line no it's it, but it's based on exploitation and this is just like you know i'm sorry but this just comes across as like wcw and and like eric bischoff era you know monday night raw yeah you know, it felt it's like the like, late 90s early aughts and i'm just like yeah i mean we should be I've, on that i've seen mina do her like you know psycho stalker girl in love approach when it came to tam and it came to other women she was feuding with, whether it's for a, a long-term feud or for like her her chasing the the white belt. But it, it never got to the point where she was blatantly throwing herself at anyone. No. That being said, we will return to the topic of stardom in a little in this episode. But I, I just want to uh, point out that we, it would be remiss of us to not mention the, the passing this month of um, legendary uh, Japanese professional wrestler Aki Bono, who who passed away at the age of fifty four due to heart failure. And you know, when I hear when I hear an age like that, Karen, it scares me because I'm I'm fifty one years old. So yeah. you know, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm not. We're not going to go too deep into Aki Bono's career. Like I, I I'm pretty sure John is probably going to do a write up. I don't know that he's not said anything to me about that, but I'm pretty sure he's either going to do a write up or he's going to mention, um, like go more into detail about Aki Bono's uh, career, not only in professional wrestling, but probably his origins in sumo, um, his transition into both K1 and mixed martial arts, which is, if you look at his K1 and mixed martial arts career, it is maybe even more fascinating than his professional wrestling career. But uh, real name um, is Chadwick. Uh, Heo Ruin. He was born May 8th, 1969 in Hawaii. Um, he joined the sport of sumo in 19, uh, 1988, and he made history by reaching the rank of Yokozuna, which is the highest honor you can reach in, in, in sumo wrestling. And he was the first non-Japanese person to reach that rank. Um, and he did that in January of 1993. Um, he would, you know, have a lot of success in sumo. He would then uh, leave sumo and then he tried k1 and he tried mma and he had like varying degrees of success but it made him famous you know this is the era of pride this is the era of the freak fight in k1 and these these kinds of like wow look at let's put this guy against this guy and see how much money we make and you know that i mean one of his first fights i think might have even been his first fight was against bob sap you know wow. yeah and it outdrew kohaku on TV, it's the first combat sport 
uh, event to draw out draw Kohaku on television. And if people don't know, Kohaku is like the year the New Year's uh, music show. Yeah. The red, the the white and red, you know, white versus red um, show that's like traditionally been the highest rated thing on New Year's Eve, but this this beat it, and uh, and it drew, and I think it drew a lot of people at the Nagoya Dome uh, in Aichi Prefecture, and and this is like, and this kind of set up sets up his transition into professional wrestling, and he would make his debut in professional wrestling for the WB on the um, March 31st, 2005 episode of SmackDown to promote a worked sumo f match against the big show of all people. My, a lot of people I think rem would remember this. This is for Mar this would be for WrestleMania 21. So he, he would have a job, a, ma a match against the jobber. Um, win that he would do the match, which he would win at, at, at WrestleMania. So, and then, yeah, and then he would, um, move on to back to Japan. Uh, and he would join All Japan Pro Wrestling in 2005, um, teaming with various people there. And then from there, he 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 would join um, New Japan Pro Wrestling in 2006 for until about you know kind of somewhere in 2007. So he did a year in that company, and then he would um, join Hustle, my least wow. favorite promotion in the history of Japanese professional wrestling, because it wasn't wrestling; it was just comedy. People forget, like, oh, how dare you slander hustle? Listen, I'm not a fan of the DDT, I'm not a fan of the hustle. They gave us you Shuri, are? though. They gave us Shuri and Kushida. Did they? Oh, well, I mean, because they escaped. They, <laughs> they, escaped. They, they, they very much did escape. <laughs> they escaped uh, that whole scene. Anyways, so he did that for about two years. And then he would uh, do some dates for, for Dragon Gate Pro Wrestling from 2008 to 2010. He would then move on to uh, Pro Wrestling 01 from 2009 to 2013. And then, but during all this, he's also returned back to um, All Japan. All Japan was always kind of like his home base for, for being a wrestler because that's, you know, like um, he trained with Keiji Muto. He trained also with, I believe, Ricky Choshu as well. I mean, I don't know like how you can get more legendary Japanese wrestlers to train you than Muto and Choshu, but um, like he, so he would wrestle basically from in all Japan from 2008 2015, doing dates for a lot of other companies, like not just the ones I mentioned, but I, I believe he's done dates for like people like Pro Wrestling Noah and, and other places as well. So. Um, I, I, again, I'm, and then and then he would leave all Japan and try to form his own group called Odo up until 2017. And uh, I'm just gonna run down like his 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 the titles he has won in wrestling. And and again, I'm I'm pretty sure John's gonna do something more in depth, either audio or something on the on the site. So keep your eyes out for that for more information about the career of of and life of Akibono. But in all Japan, he has won, he won every, pretty much every major title there. He was an all Asia tag team champion twice with Ryo Tahama, another former sumo wrestler. He was a uh, triple crown champion twice. He was a uh, world tag team champion twice, once with Tai Okea and once with Yutaka Yoshe, who also unfortunately uh, passed away recently as well. He won the champion carnival in 2015 and uh in some battle royals and the odo tournament in 2013 in dragon gate he was part of the open the triangle gate championship team with masaki uh, mochizuki and don fuji ddt pro wrestling kod six man tag team champion with sanshiro takagi and toro owashi uh, pro wrestling zero one nwa intercontinental tag team champion three times once with chinjiro otani once with daisuke Sekimoto and once with Shogun Okamoto, he was the NWA Pan Pacific Premium Heavyweight Champion and the Zero One World Heavyweight Champion. Do you know? Do you know that the the Zero One World Heavyweight Championship belt is the a, is the former AWA World Heavyweight Championship belt, Karen? Really? Yes. I did not the, know that. The one uh, was run over by Stan Hansen, used you know, worn by Rick Martel back in the eighties. That's like the the, the, the the book the 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 image I have of that title is the one worn by Rick Martel and Stan Hansen and, and of course Nick Bockwinkel. Um and yeah, so also uh, he yeah, he's he's did a lot. He he got uh, 
to best tag team award in 2005 from Tokyo Sports with Keiji Muto. And, uh, and then again in 2009 with Ryota Hama. And uh, just very, very highly decorated uh, wrestler. And, and uh, our, our sympathies and condolences go out to his friends and family across the world. And uh, yes, if you want more information, I'm sure we'll have something later on, either audio form or, or written uh, on the site. But I just wanted to just say for me, like I, I, I kind of like, you know, like I was always been aware of, of Aki Bono since the time he joined professional wrestling back in like for the WB. And then he just have a tremendous amount of success because he was such a famous celebrity in Japan. Karen, not it's like very much like the Bob Sapp effect, yeah. like this guy, not really a trained professional wrestler, but he was IWGP World Heavyweight Champion because he was so famous, and it 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 made kind of some business sense to like, okay, maybe if he wants to join professional wrestling, we should make him a champion in our company because maybe it'll draw money. I I, I don't think Bob Sapp really did that much. Neither I don't think Akibono necessarily made a huge business difference. But like again, they were popular. They they put eyes on on the whatever company that they they were wrestling for and aki bono i think lasted a lot longer than bob sap did and uh yeah what do you have any thoughts or memories about aki bono karen well i mentioned this briefly when we were preparing for the show is that like for me i always i remember his name and i remember of him because during the time that you were mentioning from 2003 through 2008 that's when i was living in japan so the fact that they made such a big deal about him being a like you know a foreigner who not only made his way into sumo but achieved the rank of yokozuma i just remember seeing him on like all these different variety shows you know showing showing off his international culture and how he's adapted to japanese culture and i knew that he had done wrestling but very much like you know akira hokuto <laughs> i knew of her from japanese variety tv not that i knew that she was a wrestler at a time but I had never seen her wrestle until I went back and finally watched old matches in recent years. So it's, it's the same thing with Aki Bono. I always remember them promoting him in big matches and talking about him being on this show and the show. And even, you know, talking about the Uta, the, the Kohaku Utagasen, that's like, in, for everyone who doesn't understand, it's not just a countdown music show on New Year's Eve. It traditionally has all the top rated boy bands, girl bands, pop idols, from the, across the board in Japan. Like if you are on Kohaku, you have made it as an artist. So for, for his fight to outdraw a show that goes and actually counts down to midnight to celebrate new year, it's a very big accomplishment, especially for a foreign national living and working in Japan. That's right. And that would be, you know, both, both and it, it's hey, both and Bob Sapp. Sapp. Bob, Bob Sapp was, and, 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 was very famous at the time. And Akibono. But, um, there you go. Well, and anyways, uh, We'll move on from there. Let, let's get into the bulk of the show, Karen. We're going to start off with startup notes. And uh, I want to talk first about the, the wrestlers that that had were announced as leaving. Yep. Um, uh, the first one being Julia. And now we know where she's going. She's going to WB, probably joining the NXT roster as, um, you know, the, traditionally the post-WrestleMania, you know, kind of season is where a lot of NXT talent gets called up. And I'm, I'm assuming... People like Tiffany Stratton are going to go up. She's already joined the main roster, but she's probably going to be um, leaving NXT. And and some other talents are going to be joining the N the WB main roster, whether SmackDown or Raw. I think Julia is going to be slotted into the NXT Women's Championship scene very quickly. And and uh, she she had I think really great debut at Stand and Deliver where they put the camera here. apparently she did not she wasn't watching on monitors if she didn't know she was on television and then i think maybe Re william Regal had to say to her oh they're, they're cheering for you they're they're excited to see you in, in in wb so um i think great choice for her to go to wb slash nxt because yeah i you know say what you will about WWE. they they know how to book women's wrestlers there that's my opinion um i i don't know if she and obviously they're going to give her a massive push because they have a lot of faith in her. And, and, and you know, Paul Levesque has proven that talent he gets from stardom, especially he, he knows what he's getting and he, he knows how to push them. So, and, and Shawn Michaels, I think is, is primarily the booker over there as well. He, he seems to have a pretty good idea how to, how to book the talent as well. 
I, I had to laugh, you know, going back like a month or so ago when uh, Triple H was asked about Julia and the, you know, the Joshi revolution. And because, you know, he's been consistently been able to catch lightning in the bottle with with Asuka and Kyrie and Io. And, you know, to, to an extent, Saray had a decent run, but, you know, she did, for some reason, she didn't gel with the whole rebranding of what they were doing in NXT at the time. As somebody who has watched these women go through NXT and work their way up to WWE's main rosters of Raw and SmackDown, this is probably not only the better bet, but the safer bet. Because I feel like with all the support that they have at the PC, you know, with train, with, you know, they, they have the foreign, uh, all the non, or all the ESL, the English second language talent, uh, they enroll them in English language courses. They have, you know, they're at the PC five days a week with everybody they work with. So she'll be able to adapt to the style without having to worry about traveling all that much, especially if she goes into NXT before going, you know, I mean, I don't know if she, they would pull in AJ Styles and just throw her onto the main roster, but I think she would be a good talent to put into NXT if she, especially if she gets treated like how EO and Kyrie did or how Ricochet did. Like they were, they made a very big deal out of them, especially as they're going to probably be one who would probably they could build the 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 next arc of NXT programming around them. Um, yeah. Selfishly, I am glad that this could be the possibility of where she's going. Uh, but you know, the 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 Triple H point photo never lies. So it, it it's more, I think, at this point, going to be a question of when she shows up. Uh, especially with all the rumors that are going around that she may or may not be involved in whatever Ross is announcing a week from now. Right, so. and and to that effect, like um, Utami Hayashida is not. It's not staying with stardom. Uh, my uh, Sakurai, Mirai, and Yuzuki are also leaving. Yep. And the safe bet would be that they are going to join Rossi Ogawa's new promotion, whatever that might be. That's what my gut tells me, is that that would be... I mean, as much as I would love to see them all show up in WWE, I don't think I don't think Rossi going to WrestleMania and hanging out with Bull Nakano and being in the press box with everyone means that he's the secret NXT Japan pipeline. And I'm not saying that at all. Uh, the, you know, with NXT working with all Japan recently, and that now that they're making this whole, like, WWE is, they're, they're kicking open their own forbidden door at this point, possibly. I, I look at it as an opportunity for more people to learn about more wrestlers from around the world. I'm not going to be mad at it. <laughs> if they try for NXT Japan, I might get mad at it. <laughs> but if, if it's this reciprocal agreement where they give opportunities and, like, you know, more importantly, better pay <laughs> for people. I'm all for it. Um, yeah, but I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm just curious to see where Rossi, where the Hat Man's journey goes from here. Like, I want to know. I want to know all the details. I think they learned their lesson with the failure of NXT UK. You know, and they I have yet to so. ever ever penetrate the Mexican lucha libre market. I think they're just happy to have like alliances and like, oh, maybe we'll send yeah. some, you know, developmental talent to to work tours of all Japan to get seasoning and, you know, and then they don't, and we, the thing is, is like in those, in those situations, we can control the booking of it. So yeah, yeah like this guy, he can lose, but this guy we sent over can't lose. And, yeah. you know, for example, a company like all Japan, uh, you know, the way it is now, they're not going to say no to WWE, you know, yeah. like the, for booking. If, if, if like WWE that. in the WWE money along with them. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, N you know, at the stardom show, I don't know if you had seen her in the audience, but she was backstage a lot. Natalia was there and she had mentioned that uh, WWE is planning to finally resume touring to Asia again, specifically in Japan in 2024. So, you know, not that it, it's they're establishing a foothold or anything like that, but they, they, traditionally before the pandemic, WWE would go there a couple of times a year, at yeah. least twice a year for big shows not in like not in a not in Coraquin Hall or in the Dome, but they would have like a big show at a big a big venue in the area. Yeah, they I mean they they, they did the shows. At, I think they did the show at Sumo Hall or Budokan. Yeah. It was Sumo Hall. It was Sumo Hall, right? And I I like listen. I would I would actually think it would be great if they did some kind of show at Corkin Corkin Hall because to, to be to say what an NXT we did a show at at the, Hall. Yeah, say. no, you know what? No, like, do an I NXT do fucking, an NXT pay per view. Yeah. At Coraco um, Hall. Karen, I need to see WV main roster talent. I need to see the Judgment Day. 
my boy Jay, Jay Uso doing yeeting it up in Cork and Hall. He's Come not on. yeeting anyone from the balcony. <laughs> no, but he's you know he's like on the turnbuckle doing you know the the, the yeet. So. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think it'd be great for talent who, made, who became famous in Japan, like like to to, to <laughs> imagine they're coming back WWE in Cork and Hall. AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, uh, Io, Asuka, Kyrie. Uh, uh, like Finn Balor, Finn, that, yeah, that would be awesome. I think that'd be that'd be great. But anyways, we're, the, we're getting the, ahead the ourselves. The tickets for that show would like vanish in a oh, second. Oh no, they'd Forget. be gone I, no. so quick. You you couldn't even like you probably can't even get them on the that secondary standing market. room only like that dash up the stairs to the balcony. The balcony would be so full. <laughs> so so like you said, Karen, like um, Rossi Gao will announce next week that. What, Sometime within the next is, week, we, what he's planning to do. So, we'll we'll find out, and you know, we'll talk about it in, in in sometime in May on the next episode of that. And I'm sure a lot of developments will happen between. If you get, a, next if you week. get an actual phone call from me, I'll be like, "Just happening." <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Like honestly, like when they announced it, like I mean, John, wait, put get the Empress on 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 you know the the show like, to know. talk about her. You know, like <laughs> you know, come on, come on, Brad Thurston. Let Come it be on, Tuesday on. when I'm remote, not on a day where I'm at the office, because then it just so, it, get, it gets too stressful. So, you know, I I, I saw Brandon at the, the drink up in in Philadelphia, and I said, "Hey, when am I going to be on Paul again Thursday?" And I said, "Rich, how many you've been on Paul again Thursday?" He's like three times. I'm like, "Hey." And then, then Brandon said <laughs> I to me, "I haven't been on Paul again Thursday, but I don't think I have anything to contribute to Paul again Thursday." Ah, see, see, Brandon asked me, "What what can you bring to Paul again Thursday?" To WH? I go, "What can't I bring to Paul?" Again I mean, and he's like. He conceded. I mean, Brandon true. did have me do some translation work for him at one point, so there's there that. There <laughs> By the way, Brand Brandon Thurston, very dry sense of humor. One, I, I was like Brandon. joking with him. He's 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 great. I, I love that guy. Anyways, but um, we're moving on. So we'll we'll find out. I and probably he's gonna have some of these names that we just mentioned that are. I, I feel I on. feel I feel the gravitational pull. If if I if I were going, especially if stardom is all you know your entire career like julia has the the aspect of being have, having been in ice room and been in another promotion so she knows what she needs to do for other talent who all they know is the stardom way it might be easier to transition into a freelance role if they know they have some sense of stability yes i i i think something i think back to what you have said to me many times uh, since the announcement of Rossi Gallo leaving and that, you know, these wrestlers are, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five wrestlers who said they're leaving starting because that's the end of their contract. Yep. That's, that's when their contract is expiring. You have said countless times to me, well, who knows when other people's contracts are coming up and who knows if they're going to stay. I'm just saying Dave Meltzer is very transparent and very insistent about the fact that Mayu has to stay until her film comes out in May. Just saying that's right. floating out there. Yeah. And I don't know, but if this becomes very much like Okada leaving New Japan, stardom potentially have to figure out who they are without the, the final daughter of freedom and without the icon. That could be a big power shift within the company. Yeah. Again, you, you, there's always been a lot of rumblings about the displeasure of the schedule that the Bushi Road had put the certain wrestlers on since the the acquisition. I have about that schedule. Oh that's, yeah, me too. That schedule too. was was insane. That was a WWE level of scheduling. So we'll see maybe more. And you you would have to figure like possibly a, a financial backer of this new Rossi Ogawa promotion may may or may not be the WB. Who knows? We'll see. We'll find out, right? I, I mean, we, I made the joke, I think it was with you last time we recorded, was that, you know, there, that article came out with uh, Sanshiro Takagi, Rossi, and uh, Shuji Ishikawa. And I said, well, what if they all work together? And then, like, literally day one, March 1st, Julia is showing up in, in, uh, in NOAA on Monday Magic, getting put on their biggest show, which is running opposite New Japan, on Don Taku weekend. And I'm like, what if they start working with Pro Wrestling Noah? Because Noah doesn't use Tokyo Joshi Pro's girls, they use freelancers. Or, yes. you know, Shuji Shikawa has his own like Evolution Joshi, his own very, I mean, there's literally two wrestlers and they're doing tryouts for more right now. 
But what if he starts working with them as well because he left all Japan? So it's this whole thing of, I feel like Rossi has a network tight enough that it could very easily, like whatever transition period they have, it's going to be a very minimal one, if that, because he has enough, he's well, connected well enough within the country. The, they, they love the hat man over there. I mean, not they everybody do. does, obviously, no, but, but, but I think he's loved well enough or respected well enough or smart, or, you know, to be able to conduct business with other people. Yes. And I think my guess is a lot of the stern wrestlers whose contracts are not up yet feel a, loyalty to to him because he helped shepherd their careers we'll see we'll see it's it's interesting time to be a, a you know a stardom fan joshi pro wrestling fan so we we had the new japan watch for a couple of years with you know jay leaving osprey leaving okada leaving i feel like this neck these next 12 months are going to be critical for stardom especially when november december when the contract renewal phase comes around for the fiscal year starting in 2025 right so other notes from stardom uh hanan will be challenged for the white belt april 21st at yokohama butai taking on the current white belt champion sari ano uh what do you think is sari going to retain or will hanan get to that next level in her career in the track record tends to be that the cinderella the cinderella tournament winner always goes to the white belt and they don't get it on their first shot as much as I would love to believe that they're they're putting they're going to go all in on the young lioness and put the white belt on her, they recently signed Saudi to a a special contract where she's primarily with Stardom but is able to fulfill other obligations outside of the company. So I don't know, and yeah. they kind of leaned heavily on her when Tam was injured and Natsupoi was injured, so she kind of like be, became the de facto representative of Cosmic Angels while most of the Cosmic Angels were injured or, and, or leaving the company or joining Club Venus. So I don't know. But, you know, if you really want to turn stardom on its head, put the white belt on a 19-year-old. Go ahead. Yeah. And, I'll, I mean, and she's, also... She's, 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 the, a, she's like a veteran, though, not the... I mean, she's been wrestling since she was 12 years old, so... so. Uh, but, yeah, that show also ha will have Momo Watanabe challenging Micah for the, the red belt that has eluded her for so her entire career. Uh, she, she's gone for that belt multiple times and it has always come up short. And then Sare uh, is going to be challenging Mayu Iwatani for the IWGP Women's Championship. Yeah, so I, I, I'm hoping... Momo gets the belt. I, uh, so she deserves I. it. She deserves so it. She's she, she's just she, such a star wars that company. She's done her time. She's she's. Yeah. I I don't. I, I think they have other plans for who's going to win the five star. And if Momo goes into the end of the, if if they let Momo have a monster run with that belt leading up to the end of the year, I could easily see them having Kamatani win the five star and being the one to dethrone Momo at the last show of the year. Right. For the well, belt. we'll see. We'll see. A lot of interesting things I'm planning. Empress, Nexus Venus, Micah, Mina Shirakawa, Gina, uh, Beat, God's Eye, Shuri, Mirai, Aimi, uh, Ami Sore for the artist belts. Uh, Crazy Star, the, the newly formed tag team of Suzuki and May Sarah, Beat, Utami, and Sai Kamatani for the Goddesses tag team title. So uh, you're already seeing titles getting taken off people who are leaving the yep. company, which is smart. Um, and my final note for this, and uh, you know, Ju Julia. So Julia is going to WB. Utami is leaving, but they do still have some, uh, you know, final obligations for Stardom, and these will be right. fulfilled April twelfth at Cork and Hall. Uh, Julia will team up with Sherry. Great, awesome, and they will take on Mayu Utani and Hanan. And Utami uh, will team with her regular tag team partner Saya Kamitani, and they'll take on the team of Micah. And uh, Saya Ida, uh, uh, small Saya, tall Saya, small Saya, small Saya. That's right. Super um, buff Saya. <laughs> that's right. She, I, I, you know, she's, she's not a tall so person, strong. But, but like she could probably bench press like everyone at post wrestling, including Bruce. Yes. So there you go. I let her bench press me. <laughs> you let her? She bench pressed you already? I let. I would let her pick me up and throw me across the room. I don't care. See, I if I said the same thing, Karen, I get canceled. So I'm not saying like I I, I was and truth be told, I, I, I don't I think I'd want to be thrown. I will let anyway. her throw me across the room for you. 
No, that's okay. Don't, don't say it's for me. That's weird too. Uh, in fact, I don't want any wrestler picking me up and throwing me. I, you know, just as a saying. All right, let's move on. New Japan for wrestling. Um, they, they just had their big Sakura Genesis show on April 6th. And uh, some of the big results, the major results from the show, we're not going to go through the whole card. You, if you want to hear about the whole card, Karen and my good friend, Big Bruce Lord, did a wonderful uh, review for post wrestling that you can listen to uh, on everywhere you listen to podcasts, including the, the YouTube as well, right? So, actually, a shocker there. I did a written report for Sakura Genesis. There you go. Listen, we, Karen's we, like, we, 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 I did the starter report and I did the Sakura Genesis report. Bruce and I will be reuniting uh, Saturday to do Windy City Riot. Listen, Karen, Karen's like, fucking, like, you know, she's she's closing in on Andrew Thompson. And Neil, no, their man Neil Flanagan no, for like written content over the over I, the site. I, no. <laughs> hey, youngest in charge, you better fucking watch your back, pal. No the way. On your I, tail. I was I was watching the Mania Week and I was sweating with how fast they were posting Jeez, things. I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, let me just do my crochet, man. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Hey, shout out, shout out, shout out to all everyone who contributed. And, and I think Black uh, was another one that was just like he was just tearing up the wow, post. Wow. Yeah. The coverage last week. Amazing. Mania week was Amazing. outstanding. Everyone. Amazing did so much work and it was so great to see everybody come together like that that's right it's it like great. that week in, in the g1 tend to be the weeks that i just i don't know how everybody manages not to like lose sleep because no i don't i don't manage not to lose sleep i do lose sleep trying to watch <laughs> Same. these fucking shows and trying to you know try to to be in time to do reviews with you and Been too old whoever for <laughs> and eric marcotte and, and and stuff like that but hey you know what i i i look forward like next summer hey john wait like i i will do maybe two maybe the finals no more than that karen i want to put first lord i have to do weekends lord? only i i've got two orientation weeks this year like i I, I I was pretty much like i don't think i can do any of it but if it's a saturday and sunday shows maybe i can do those i don't and, know and, you know you gotta do a show you should do a show with eric my man eric marcotte okay you gotta do a show with him okay did you did you do a show with him did with you do eric with him? no that'd be fun i would like to listen to that you and you and eric uh, reviewing you can you can both share your love of sonata on air uh wow. so <laughs> Uh, Clark Connors and Drilla, Drilla Maloney retained the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles over Intergalactic Jet Setters and Catch 2 2 in what was it, a three way? Was it a tornado match? I didn't watch this show actually. Uh, to be honest with you. it was pretty much a tornado match because the yeah. war dogs don't care about anything so other than getting the belts and leaving. Uh, Bishamon win the IWGP <laughs> World Heavyweight Tag Team titles over Kenta and Chase Owens. Thank God he's no longer a champion in New Japan. And uh, yeah, I think it's great. Just put the belts back on these fellows. And you know what? Build towards a rematch with TMDK and then maybe Karen's wish, TMDK uh, wish reality will come true. Yeah. Um, Sho retained the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title due to, unfortunately, a, an injury suffered by Yo. Uh, a shoulder injury, his left shoulder, I believe. Did you see believe. that, Matt? Uh, no, I did not. So, like, just describe quickly for, like, uh, our listeners okay. haven't listened to like, your view. Literally, the match was a minute and a half. It was a move that Yo's done countless times, just a running, a sliding drop kick. But instead of tucking his arm under, he kept his arm like this. So his this part of his body, his torso and his arm, hit the mat, and his, he, his shoulders popped out. Ooh. And, like, because he's so lean... You, it was very noticeable that his shoulder was out of the joint, <laughs> and he oh. tried to wrestle. The ref t tried to stop him. He tried to keep going, but it was they called the match very quickly, which was good because you know trying to wrestle through something like that when you, you're you're not <laughs> you're not in a place physically to do so is more detrimental than anything else. And it quickly got turned around with poor Kosei Fujita and Doki running out trying to be a giant distraction while the medical team. I don't know who was on New Japan World on the columns that day, but they kept cutting back to the medical team working on Yo to the point where they were almost like popping his shoulder back like in real time on camera. <laughs> right. That's uh, not, but That's not what something people want to see. Sh Sho did his best to be frustrated and be like all grumpy about it and like try to like yuck it up. That you're like, oh, you couldn't even last two minutes with me, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but 
as they took yo walked off on his own volition afterwards thankfully but you know he started crying because he's frustrated that because this obviously wasn't how it was supposed to go and then show you know after fujita and um doki decided they're gonna have a number one's contenders match to decide who's going to take the belt off a of show and doki strolled off with the belt so she didn't have the belt again uh show walked to the back but as he was getting towards the the curtain fans took pictures of him crying i guess he actually got so overwhelmed and frustrated by the situation that he got caught on film from right. the fans this that... could be the start of his babe face turn god please <laughs> i don't ask for much he yeah. is I, I he is a far better baby face wrestler i mean i i know he's doing his job and he's getting paid and he's doing what he has to but god just switch them Make yo heal. He's he's great at it. He's great at being a little brat. It's fine, but make sure a baby face. <laughs> no, this is this is ghetto. Somebody. Like thinking, I'm smarter than all of you. No, ghetto, you're hey, wrong. I'm, no. I'm smarter than all of you. I, nope. I'm gonna make show the heel. No, nope. okay, whatever. Uh, Sh Shingo Takagi defeated Evil for the never heavyweight title, open weight title. Sorry, and then uh, Gabe Kid challenges. After the match, and uh, this is where he cut the big promo on Tanahashi, Karen. <laughs> or is that the other show where he was like talking, complaining about Jack Perry saying being in New Japan was a punishment? And then uh, uh, I think it was this show. I just kind of, um, you know, Gabe Kid does a lot of screaming and a yeah. lot of people like it. I just kind of tune him out. <laughs> right. I'm like, I, I get it. He, 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 he's grumpy, angry, unhinged. That's what that's his shtick at, in the within the war dogs is that's what he wants. Um, I guess they're gonna put him after whatever match he ends up having with Kingston this weekend. The, the riot rules four on four, no DQ tornado tag that they're doing. Um, but I guess we'll, we'll, we'll get to that during your preview. I, I, I'm for guessing sure. that maybe for Don Taku because Don Taku is all Bullet Club everything. That that's going to be where they're going to have give Gabe Kid maybe a little showcase against Shingo. Right, uh, Naito Tetsuya Naito retains his IWGP World Heavyweight Title over Yota Suji, and uh, who challenges for it next? Chatter, it's it's John Moxley uh, because you know getting beat in a legit beat uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu match by an accountant waiting to pick up his daughter makes you the number one contender. For the uh, I did you World Heavyweight Title. Yes, I'm making fun of the fact that John Moxley, the toughest man in AW, got beat by an accountant. You know no what, worries. Tony? Let me say. <laughs> let me just get my soapbox. Tony, don't let these guys, especially your big stars, do these outside bullshit things. Because honestly, it's not a good. It's not a good look for your fucking company when you're the guy you promote as the toughest guy in the company, and John Moxley gets beat by an accountant. Okay, just saying. Yeah, he's a talented and not taking away from that guy's jujitsu skills, but it's not a good look. Just stop letting me. In fact, don't let your ta talent take outside dates where they're going to get killed, where they're going to get injured. You're going to fire them and you're going to rehire them back because, oh, he got injured fighting another one of my contract wrestlers I let work on the independence. Why don't you just put them on your fucking television show, dude? Anyways, I don't want to get into this. We'll, we'll 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 move on to this. So, we're gonna talk about Windy City Riot. That's the next big show for New Japan here. We're well, not here, but where you are, Karen, in the United States. Perfect. And uh, we'll we'll go through. So let's talk about the matches. You're gonna run them down, and we're just gonna briefly give our thoughts about them before we move on. So okay. what what do we got at Windy City Riot? Karen? All right. So on Friday, April 12th at the Wind Trust Arena in Chicago, Illinois, New Japan will have Windy City Riot. I went to Windy City Riot. Was it last year? The year before? Either way, it's a good show. The Chicago crowd's always a good time. Uh, it's gonna. The pre-show is going to have two matches. One is the Strong Survivor match, which will feature Matt Vandergriff, who has been consistently featured as the uh, Strong Survivor, and he'll be taking on New, New Japan Academy's Zane J. And then there will be a women's tag match featuring Minik Shirakawa from Stardom uh, tagging with Viva Van against Trisha Dora and Alex Windsor. And then moving on to the main card, in no particular order, uh, the New Japan World TV Championship will be de defended by Matt Riddle against one Zack Sabre Jr. 
the inaugural champion doing champ champ things. A uh, single special singles match between Minoru Suzuki and his former son of strong style, strong style stable mate, Ren Narita. Uh, pencil in, in parentheses, probably with evil. Uh, <laughs> New Japan Strong Women's Championship, Stephanie Vaquer from CMLL will be defending against Stardom's Azami. Uh, strong Open Weight f- Championship four way tag team match between El Phantasma and Hikaleo, who are the current champions, against TMDK's Mikey Nichols and Shane Haste versus Fred Rosser and Tom Lawler versus the West Coast Wrecking Crews, Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs. There will be a special singles match of Shota Umino against Jack Perry, which all started in the Battle of the Valley when Perry attacked him and then went to Japan and joined House of Torture. Uh, then there's also the Riot Rules match with this Team Eddie Kingston versus Team Gabe Kidd, four on four, no DQ tornado tag team match with all entrants being announced at the time of entry. With Gabe Kidd having attacked Sh- T- Shingo Takagi, I was inclined to say that's probably be. Eddie Kingston and LIJ, I doubt that's going to happen unless they're going to put these guys somehow on a plane the next morning to Taipei for whatever show they have. And probably Team Gabe Kid is probably going to be Connors, Drilla, and uh, David Finley, I'm guessing. And then there's the singles, special singles match between Hiromu Takahashi and Mustafa Ali. I don't know if it's for the TNA X Division Championship or not, but I believe Ali is the current champion. And then the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, Tetsu Naito, will be defending against John Moxley. So just to break it, some of these matches down, I, I think they're going to take the belts off, the tag belts off of Phantasmo and Hikaleo. I think like it's very likely they're going to put it on TMDK just to give them some belts to have yeah. while before they become IWGP Tag Team Champions. Um as far as Kingston versus Kid goes, I think Kingston's teammates will be indie wrestlers that they'll bring in. I, I would think maybe Mike Santana, recently uh, freed from, from Rocky Cage Romero. Media. I don't know. Rocky <laughs> Romero, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it'll be people that like will at least one of them will have a, like a previous connection with with, with Eddie, and and any basically anyone who's like you know, like not contracted can, can show up w- would be perfect for teaming with Eddie in this match. And I think it Gabe's teammates are going to be war dogs. So, you know, I think maybe his regular partner, um, uh, Coughlin, Clark Connors. Did Coughlin retire? Alone. Did he? I don't, I, I didn't keep I, track. Think, I think he did. Recently. Then David Finley. Yeah. Then David Finley will probably be it. Um, and as far as you have said, now you have oh, said earlier, I forgot Nick Nemeth and Tomohiro Ishii, non title. It's okay. No, no one cares about Nick Nemeth <laughs> in New Japan. Okay. Uh, you, th- you have said that you think that John Moxley will become the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. What, I think so, that's, what, I think what, that's what, where we're going. Why do you think that, Karen? Of the, the foreign talent that isn't Eddie Kingston. Who has consistently been in New Japan or New Japan Strong for a very long time? John Moxley has been a constant since his departure from WWE. He's held the American Championship. He's been in the G1. What else is left for John Moxley to do in New Japan besides become a tag team champion with Shota Umino, which I hope they never do? I mean, like, if, if you're going to keep going to the same well and putting Moxley on all these shows because he's such a big draw when they tour in the United States and probably other international destinations, I feel like that's the move. Uh, but I don't know if AEW could sacrifice him for the G1 season, especially after he got sick the last time he was in the G1. <laughs> right. So... If he if he does win the the IWGP title, do you think he holds it and builds towards someone taking off of him at Wrestle Kingdom, where it would be in the G one? Like you can always say, like can, for, can for, for, Mo- really for Moxley, wild, my really wild fantasy booking. There's two routes. Sure. It's either going to be David Finley because David Finley is, holds that win over him from winning the Global Championship, or and I don't know if he could handle being in the main event of the Tokyo Dome. This is where Shota Umino finally graduates from being 
John Moxley's uh, protege by beating him for the championship. I think. Not that he, I, I, I like Umino. I just don't think he's ready for it. No, I I don't think he's ready for it. I think it would be a huge mistake at this point in his career to put the World Heavyweight title on him. I'd rather you go with someone more established. Um, yeah. If you're going to go with his generation, it has to be Suji. Maybe this yeah. is Suji's path to like redeeming his own title. Yeah. Put it on Kiyomiya. No, Kiyomiya <laughs> is never going to win any belt in, in New Japan unless it's a tag title. Um, Ki- Nakajima, Nakajima, you know, we'll talk about Nakajima because he is not no longer the All Japan Triple Crown champion. He, he is a freelancer. He has not surfaced anywhere as, as of this recording. My guess is he, he is going to go to New Japan because I think one of his goals is to have that the trifecta of the major heavyweight titles in Japanese professional wrestling for men. And that would be the JHC heavyweight champion, which has been, he has been the all Japan triple crown, triple crown champion. So all he needs is to become IWGP world heavyweight champion. I can see them hiring him. I can see him being someone they think, Hey, like, you know, he was a little weird over in all Japan because he had more stroke than the company itself. But he won't be like that in New Japan for sure. He he will behave himself in New Japan, and and he's kind of wrestler that I think they they like to push when they get someone of his style, which is like you know the shoot style, the kicker, the kind of Shibata like wrestler, and I mean and so many fresh matches that you could have with him against anyone, whether it's you know rematches with Shingo Takagi, matches with Naito, matches with the younger generation in uh, Shota, Suji, Narita. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know, even like, hey, shit, if, if Shota, if, if Sho becomes a bay face again, he becomes Shota Tanaka. Sho Tanaka! Like, high voltage Sho Tanaka versus Katsuyuka Nakajima would be fucking awesome. Oh, but, my um, heart. My whether heart. or not they would <laughs> put the belt on him this, like, if he joins this year, whether they put the belt on him this year, like, I think it's very likely. John Moxley would win, but I can also see them just like saying, you know, no, because if John Moxley can't commit to a, a a bigger schedule with AW, if Tony's not willing to let him go there, I I don't see him last until Wrestle Kingdom because I don't think you should have not have the belt in New Japan. Do you know what I mean? I I think well, we need that. We, we've had that discussion before, and they when they put a belt on jo- a New Japan belt on John Moxley. And then he had the the U.S. belt hostage for quite some time. I don't think they want their world title hostage though. Like I, that's one thing I you would, put on like a secondary belt on him, but to yeah. put the main belt on him, I think that's. I don't think they're. I I could question the sanity of of like the bookers and, and the management of New Japan, but I think they're still like, yeah, we've had that happen before. It's not fun when you had like. Not that I'm saying John Box is equivalent to Brock Lesnar, you know. Yeah. He's he literally held that belt hostage, but. The person that not so much Moxley that would hold the belt hostage, it would be it would be AW management, particularly Tony Khan likes to say, yeah. "No, I can't spare you, Tony. John, I can't spare you. You can't get a, you can't you can't go to Japan." Hey, kid, like Tony, I gotta, I'm fucking advertised. Oh, but I need you for for Collision, man. I I got this great idea that I'm gonna want you to do on Collision. Fuck, I already said I'd fucking go over there. Anyways, that's that's the kind of conversation I can imagine between tk and that's and why i'm that. dreading the possibility not that i don't want moxley as champion i think he he's he's been there long enough that if they were to put another belt on another foreign wrestler even though they have multiple unforeign wrestlers at the moment uh he's done his he, he's served his time as it were <laughs> he's he's done enough for the company where i could see it being a possibility but then you do run into the scheduling conflicts of because whenever new japan does a tour they like having that champion as available as possible and especially in all those smaller cities they don't ever really get to see that yeah. so it be, it's going to be very complicated and very delicate unless they i don't think they would want to do a transitional championship run where he like he gets it for example at say he wins saturday but he's not gonna be dropping it by June 9th in Dominion. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. it's like I don't think they would only get give him two, maybe three defenses. Like, but do you hold him in the belt? And you know, my concern is that you know, talking about AEW management possibly 
having sway over the booking should he become champion. You don't want a co another company holding control over the main event of your biggest show of the year. That's why I think it's very, you know, it's also, I, I think it's kind of like 50, 50 Karen, like, yeah. like that Moxie would win, but also like that Naito would retain this title. I think it's better if Naito retains. I, John Moxie doesn't need this belt to be honest with you. He doesn't, he's a big enough star. Like they love him. They oh, don't yeah. need to see the belt on him. Like if he's, if he's like becomes more like, you know, okay, like I, I'm not needed as much over an AW, I can commit more time to it. Then great. I, Give him a run. That's I would think that would be that would be awesome. I think it, fans would love it, but I I don't think they need to see it. Like they will care and love John Moxley in Japan, with or without that belt. I want but, Tom uh, Waller back in Japan. So somebody you want somebody, Tom put, Waller? somebody put a belt on Tom Waller in New Japan, please. A singles championship. Put the yeah, I don't know why. Him. You know, like Tom was at TV the, title the something. show. I didn't say anything to him because he, he looked, was great he on commentary. Name. Like. I really enjoyed him on commentary, but I really but wish I'm sure he would have had a reunion. <laughs> Tom, Tom in in wrestling in New Japan on more regular basis, but outside of the G1, sure, why not? Like we we want to see that. Um, let's move on. They do, do you have like a big uh, show in uh, in Taiwan? Is it correct, Karen? And, and yes. what's been announced for that show? All right, so Wrestling World 2024 in Taiwan is actually going to be on Sunday, April 14th at Zep New Taipei. Uh, there will be a singles match against Toyu versus 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 Axe Wang. Uh, there will be the Never Six Man Openweight Tag Team Championship Tournament. It's going to be a one day tournament, basically four teams. Uh, first round will be Team Hontai slash Chaos with uh, Tanahashi, Yano, and Bolton Oleg versus the United Empire's Great Okan, Francesco Akira, and Callum Newman. And then the on the opposite side of the bracket, it will be Lij's Shingo Takagi, Yoda Suji, and Bushi against. Uh, Evil Show and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Uh, there'll be a tag match with Tiger Grumpy Old Tiger Mask, my favorite and yours, uh, tagging with Satoshi Kojima against El Desperado and Sho Shoma Kato. Stardom will have a showcase match featuring Starlight Kid against uh, Empress Nexus Venus's Hanako. There will be the IWGP Junior Heavyweight number one contenders match between Doki and Kosei Fujita with the winner challenging show for the title eventually at some point uh iwgp tag team championships bishamon will be defending against sonata and yuyo umura i didn't want it to come to that but that's where we're at and then the finals will be the winner of the hantai slash chaos against the united empire team versus the winner of lij versus house of torture for the new i don't know if they're new or not but the for the the vacant six-man uh tag championships Okay. Well, sounds like uh, a fun sh sounding show and uh, we'll uh, have a report. Are we having a report on this show? Uh, not that I am aware of. I mean, should, should I be tapped to do one, I will be willing to do one, but well, it, is not on after... my, it is not on my docket for the weekend yet. Right. Well, maybe uh, after John and Way listen to this, I'll be <laughs> knocking on your dock. Hey, Karen, what are you doing Sunday? Sunday. Uh, hey, brunch. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, not anymore. Brunch like, with a report? Yeah, yeah Way will be like, <laughs> yeah, you know, brunch is kind of overrated, Karen. Like, I think we can use a I, I can multitask. Uh, I can review. brunch and report at the same time. There you go. There you go. It just you won't be a very it. cohesive report, but I can do it. <laughs> Uh, speaking of brunch, uh, you know, I, I I did go to Waffle House, by the way, before I came. Did back you go to Waffle Pittsburgh. House for brunch or just for a meal at a certain time? No, we we I had breakfast at 9, 10 p.m. At, at Waffle House just outside of Pittsburgh, and with the fan family, with the rich fan, uh, Melissa fan, and uh, their boy Trey. What a what a lovely child! What a very kind and polite young man that that Trey Trey fan is. Had a wonderful time. I almost got like so I you know you you see my Instagram like you can see what I I, I, I loved see. you pointing at the sign that really got me. I finished my story. <laughs> I finished my story. story. I finished story. I will say I almost got an authentic uh, waffle, waffle house, house experience, experience. because <laughs> at some point okay so to the wait to the serving staff the two of the waitresses were like beefing they were like you got more tickets than me fuck you no I don't <laughs> we were like oh shit. I think we left just before they were going to drop their gloves and start going at it. But then another, like a, a customer who seemed a little bit inebriated, like um, grabbed 
like a towel, a washcloth and, and, and dropped all the forks on the floor doing it until like getting hot water because he wanted to wipe down his table uh, before sitting. <laughs> and he's like, I meant no disrespect. Like, but it's not more like inebriated. So I was like, that's why I say that. And like, I'm sorry. Cause they, I think they just looked at him. What did you touch our spoons for our forks for? Anyways, I thought there was going to be something happen with this customer and the staff, but then I think it's more likely because the, the, the two waitresses were, we're kind of really getting into like, oh, by the way, plates were being like dropped really heavily on the counter and, and like, whoa, shit. <laughs> Me, I was looking at Rich. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to finish these grits. I think I'll just <laughs> leave those. Not a big fan of grits. I have to say, they're not bad. I don't think I don't, I've ever ordered them again. Like, but um, I mean, Waffle House. You you ordered grits from Waffle House. There are plenty yeah. of other establishments that do the grit that you sure. may enjoy. Sure. Uh, okay. Next time I'm at Bob Evans, I'll, if they have it, I'll Bob order. Evans, uh, a Cracker, Cracker Barrel. Barrel. Yeah. Uh, IHOP, I believe, does a grit. Denny's. I would say this. Okay, Waffle House in a scale of five. It's a it's a gentleman's three. Like I don't oh. regret going. I don't regret going. Uh, would I go again? Yeah, depends on the company. But <laughs> you know what I, you know what I did love, Karen. Fucking what? Bob Evans. Bob Evans was fucking great. <laughs> you know, what a great restaurant. The only problem with Bob Evans, I asked, hey, can I have some Frank's Red Hot? They didn't have any. How do you not have Frank's Red Hot if you're if you serve breakfast all day? I don't get it. They didn't have Tabasco, and I love a big, I love me Tabasco, so it was no, fine. No Cholula. Nah, man. I don't know. I've never, I don't think I've ever had it, so I can't say. I can't say. But anyways, we're we're de before we move on to another company, El Desperado. Your your man, El Desperado, Karen will produce his own show on June tenth at Corican Hall. Uh, there's no announcements until the show itself, I believe. So it's kind of a mystery show, but I think this show will sell out because everyone loves El Desperado. Yes. Uh, I, I have a feeling that the, the Despe Invitational is going to be kind of like how Takataichi Despe Mania used to be, where it's a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, Despe is another one that has been, has like much like Hiromu, whenever it comes to talking about wrestling and other promotions or wrestlers of other promotions, he'll have banter back and forth with different wrestlers. So, I mean, I could easily see Chris Brooks being there. Of course, June Kasai. Uh, oh, well, who's the other one I'm thinking of? uh he's in ddt has long black hair and just like the dark eye makeup kind of looks like is it not it's not dice gay oh god what is his name i'm oh, sorry i'm drawing i think i think it is dice gay uh something yeah i'm not uh, sorry folks can't know how to match them kind of lit himself on fire like he does uh but you know that guy <laughs> that guy that, that guy's guy. in ddt with the, that the, guy the long hair. I, cause oh, I, like I, a metal, apologies, metal, metal apologies to all the DDT fans out there. I don't watch DDT, but yeah. I know his nickname is Charisma. I think that's the other thing I think I remember of him. Well, it, it doesn't really. Anyway, Despe has a lot of friends and a lot of promotions, so I would yeah. I could easily see it being like the the Taika, the Takataichi shows that he has a, a little bit of something from everybody and maybe some fun and exciting surprises. But I do hope that they they stream it because i kind of i really want to watch it <laughs> and that's uh june 10th in caracolin hall there you go uh let's move on um some announcements for the all together show which will be happening may 6th at budokan hall so there was a president's meeting karen hiroshi tanahashi sanshiro takagi and uh naomichi marafuji held a press conference announcing the date and location of the show which i said of course was may 6th at the budokan hall also, they said that the UJPW, the United Japan Pro Wrestling, is in full swing this year to combat the WWE Japan invasion. Oh, I made that. I added that part in myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, it will be. They announced the matches. It will be the Presidents versus the House of Torture, Evil, Ren Narita, Yujiro Takahashi. I wonder who's taking the pinball on that, Yujiro. Uh, Probably. I'm calling them the Hall of Presidents. Oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Because of that, that it's right here in Epcot that the American Adventures they have the Hall of Presidents, but I'm like literally it's the Hall of Presidents. But I want statues of Mara or animatronics of Mara Fuji, Tanahashi, and Takagi put in Epcot to replace some of the other actual presidents. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say in your dining room. For I second, mean, uh... I wouldn't say no, 
but I don't think I could even get cardboard cutouts of them to my house. So no animatronics either. Shota Umino, Kaito Kiyomiya, uh, uh, Yuki Weno will take on Yuya Uemura, Konosuke Takashida, and Shun Skywalker. So like everyone, we got New Japan, Noah, uh, DDT, uh, New Japan, uh, DDT, and Dragon Gate in this match. Pretty cool. Uh, Tomohiro, Tomohiro Ichi, Ishii, uh, sorry, Tomohiro Ishii teaming with one of my favorite wrestlers, Daisuke Sekimoto from Big Woo, Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> we'll have a beefy battle, beefy Woo. tag battle with Jeff Cobb and Masa fucking huh? Kiyomiya. What a, what a fucking There's big boy, so big beefy match. What's going on in that match? <laughs> You know, I, I, I've met Daisuke Sekimoto many times in person, Karen. My favorite would be in Toronto when they had, a, I think, a joint like he was wrestling for, I think, Progress at the time in showing Toronto. I was coming from the bathrooms, which were in the basement. He was going to the bathroom basement. He saw I was wearing the T-shirt of the astronauts, Takuya Nomura and Fuminori Abbey from, who wrestled primarily in Big Japan. So he looked, he said, why do you have... Takuya sure and I go I love Takuya he's awesome he's like you know Takuya I'm like yeah man I know who you are you're fucking Daisuke Sekimoto I said don't you remember I met you New Year's Eve at fucking Shinkiba man you're you like sold me some of your bullshit water and I didn't say that part but and he's like oh he's like oh my god you know who I am I'm like dude yes I love you you're you and Okabashi are awesome tag team and you're a great singles wrestler anyways he's a very nice man very very nice man so if you have a chance to meet that big dice Take someday it. you'll you'll you won't regret it you karen or anyone else listening to this should i go if i see dice case in real life should i go see talk to him yes absolutely he'll be very nice he'll be he'll be happy that you're talking to him so there you go um so that's 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 a pretty good card i can't wait to watch actually watch this show when it when it comes out uh next month if it does have come out, it'll come out. It'll, it'll come out. It'll, it'll have you seen the somewhere. two matches they've added to it? What have they added? What have I forgotten, Karen? What, what they, they have add? added a singles match between, you know, my, my favorite grumpy guy, Keno, against Kosei Fujita. And then there's a tag match, which is Sonata and Kai from Dragon Gate against Zack Sabre Jr. and Chris Brooks from DDT. Oh, that's pretty cool. Sonata and Kai. So, you know, they were in All Japan together. Is that is They're that what the link between the two of them are? Okay. It's Kai and Sonata, yeah. So it's like Kai, Sonata, uh, Hiroshi Yamoto, who was like the junior Kai, like the junior ace of All Japan at the time, and and Manabu Soya was was part of it. So you know Manabu Soya and Sonata used to have like this like yes. young young lions tag team, and they were like perennial All Asia tag team champions, mm -hmm. and they had a fucking awesome match against Strong BJ, which is a team of the aforementioned Daisuke Sakamoto and his awesome tag team partner yuji okabayashi so uh if you, a lot of those matches are on on the youtube channel or 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 karen you know what you have access to you have my login for ajpw.tv i don't know then what you, you're talking about you can w you can we well, don't they're care not, passwords they're, they're not fucking <laughs> listening to this they're they're not gonna want us they don't want to lose my 10 bucks a month you know so it's okay i don't care if they hear this they're, they're not listening to this um let's move on have you give me some homework for next month yeah yeah you know what so not just type it you know just looking for sonata I mean... like you can find all your sonata matches right now eric marcotte's like thinking can i get your login wh i can see <laughs> young sonata eric hey hit me a brother I, I might be able to hook you up there okay uh big japan wrestling big japan pro wrestling let's let's move on to there um so i'm very excited about this upcoming strong title match so you know in karen in, in, in big japan pro wrestling for those of you might who, who may not know um, New Japan, uh, Big Japan has two styles of wrestling that they promote. One is deathmatch wrestling, and they have deathmatch champions, and they have deathmatch tag champions. But also, they promote just straight wrestling. It's called their strong division, and they have the strong champion. And the current strong champion is like I think a wrestler you would really like, Karen. His name is Yuya Aoki. He's on. He's been on this amazing reign as the strong champion. And he has an upcoming match against uh, another young man who who has been a strong champion. His name is Daichi Hashimoto. He is the son of Shinya Hashimoto. And so I want to just give some facts of why this is such a big match. So da Yuya uh, has already surpassed Daichi's last reign, which had eight 
so he so Dyke Yuya has eight successful defenses of the strong title so far in his in his title reign. Um, Daichi during his very successful reign had six successful defenses before losing the title. Uh, Yuya is currently tied with former champion Yuji Okabashi, who he beat to win the title. Uh, whose um, last so Yuji Okabashi's last reign was 487 days. Holy smokes! Okay, uh, and then and then he's tied currently with the amount of defense successful defenses he's had with the strong title with Okabayashi, and needs this win over Daichi to surpass Okabayashi and become the greatest strong champion in the history of Big Japan's strong division. So I, I'm very excited. This will take place at the Endless Survivor Beyond the Milestone show uh, at Yokohama Budokan, not the Buntai, but the Yokohama Budokan, and that's happening on May 4th. And I and I and I cannot wait to see this. Uh, you know, I I have my access through various friends to uh to this you know watching matches for big japan so i i'm looking forward to it it will be a big match you know sharon if i if i am able to get uh, a link for it i i will send you this match you don't have to watch any of the deathmatch wrestling i don't really watch it unless i ever go to a live big japan show which i've done which i've done and you know the fine as long as you don't sit close to the to the, the broken glass flying everywhere it's fine but i i am a big fan of their of, of big japan's strong division i it's you know what karen it's kind of wrestling you and i like okay it's kind of like you know imagine a company just full of young lions but they're all good but they're all like seasoned you know like my boy takuya nomura you know you were I right about unfortunately, him <laughs> i, I did were... not who i unfortunately did not get to see live at wrestlemania week unfortunately no. i didn't go to blood sport but it's okay i've seen takuya live many 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 times all right so uh finally let's move on to something I a company I've recently been very excited about Karen because and that's all Japan for wrestling. Um I have some notes where did these notes so we're gonna first talk about they just they announced the the members of the oh you know what I forgot something we 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 should talk briefly about the Fortune Dream June 12th show. That's of course the the shows produced by Kenna Kobashi. Um so one of the big matches that they signed, lands and wrestlers show Daimanji will take on your boy for wrestling though as Go Shizaki in a in a in a hard hitting match. Um this guy is is pretty big, I think. Uh he wrestles a lot for both big stature wise or popularity and, wise. Uh stature wise. He's pretty okay. Uh and and Gleet, he does a lot of work for Gleet. And as well, they have announced Naruki Doi and Risa Sarah. Versus uh, Sayaka Unagi and Masato Tanaka in a special tag match. And and as of this as of this recording, Aaron, I do not know if they've announced any other matches for this, but we'll say no. So, but yeah, that's another show that I'm looking forward to, and that's the June 12th show, uh, Fortune Dream, produced by Kenta Kobashi. But the let's Fortune move on. Dream series to... always always has a good variety. They're fun. Of matches. They're, they're 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 like little little dream mini dream cards. <laughs> The best, one of the best Fortune Dream shows has Kairi Sane trying to get inspiration from her hero, who is Kenda Kobashi. Her favorite wrestler growing up was Kenda Kobashi. So that's a great scene. And he's like, yeah, you can win. He's trying to, you know, imbue yeah, so her with, 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 with fighting spirit. So let's move on. So, um, excuse me, All Japan Pro Wrestling will have their champion carnival uh, run from April 18th to May 12th, within the finals will be happening from the Yokohama Buntai. And uh, it starts off at Corken Hall, of course. Every every Champions Carnival starts off at uh, Corken Hall these days. it's that season already. It is. I feel like we just had the Champions Carnival. No, like all Golden Week's, Golden Week's over. And then we're, we're slowly but surely getting to Oban season, Karen. I know. But uh, let's talk about these blocks. Uh, a block is is a pretty loaded block. It has my my man Shotaro Ashino. It's got perennial uh, headliner Kento Miyahara, Yuma Aoyagi, Hokuto Omori, um, new signee Ren Ayabe. We'll talk about a little bit about him in a second. Uh, and uh, your your favorite jacket wrestler Kurosio Tokyo Japan <laughs> is in this. Um, Cyrus and Davy Boy Smith Jr. So that's I mean. Ashino, okay. Mihara, Aoyagi, 
that's a pretty just those guys alone are make this like this the stacked block but b block uh no no uh nothing to see that suwama uh riki honda jun saito ray saito the uh the current triple crown champion yuma anzai uh hideki suzuki hurtley jackson and a uh, wrestler i'm not familiar with lord crew so that's that's that um i'm gonna say i'm gonna go out on a limb i, I think um yuma anzai uh, we'll talk about his win of over over katsuka nakajima but i think the the finals uh should involve yuma anzai because he's a triple crown champion but i don't think he should win i think it should set up that the triple crown champion should um not win the the champion carnival i would like shatara shino to pull a hat trick and win it this year again and kind of like court like cody rhodes finish the story i think he needs to become triple crown champion like t using yuma to take the belt off of nakajima was a good idea because now you establish this guy as being like your next big star but he's still you know early in his career you need the guy that I think what they were going to put the belt on last year, but due to injuries, they did not. And that is Shotaro Ashino. And, and so like my, my dream, if he's not fighting Yuma in the finals, okay, that's okay. He fights Suwama in the finals or Oof. Yuki Honda. Both are former tag team partners with, on, with, with Ashino. That's what I would go through. A block finals should be like Ashino. I'm going to say Ashino versus Yuma Aoyagi. I think that would be a good thing for Yuma to have. Also, uh, B block finals. Maybe Suwama puts down the young Triple Crown champion Yuma Anzai or Ryuki Honda does. But either Suwama or, or Ryuki Honda versus Ashino in the finals. And uh, I hope my man Shotaro Shino wins, wins the champion carnival and then challenges soon after for the Triple Crown. Are you excited, Karen? You're gonna watch some of the triple, the Champion Carnival. I, I have I have to budget my time, but I think it finishes before Best the Super Juniors. So I may need to cherry pick. So I may pick your brain as to which which matchups or which days I are must watch versus what sure. we can. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think I can, you have to watch I, the whole thing. What I can cruise by. <laughs> I don't think you have to watch the whole thing, but pretty much anything like any Ashino match versus like Kento or Yuma, uh, Omori, uh, Ren Ayabe. We'll talk about Ren Ayabe in a second, but I think all those will be, be fun to watch. Okay, so uh, let's see. What else can we... We had Yuma Anzai at the last show, at the last major show um, for, for All Japan. He defeated Katsuki Nakajima, who has been acting very strange recently. To win the triple crown he is now the youngest champion in the company history at 24 years old the f now and now keno miyahara is the second youngest when he because he, he won the belt when he was uh 26. so there you go um and uh you know some of the some of the other happenings in the company now see that all the major titles in all japan karen so that means the all asia tag titles uh, the world tag team titles and the world junior heavyweight title are all held by all japan wrestlers so anzai is triple crown champion dan tamara and uh he uh, uh sorry uh, uh, uh i'm drawing a blank he's the guy who's like pancreas mission uh anyways I'm, i'll get i'll get i'll get uh slandered for forgetting his name but him and dan tamara are the all asia tag team champions um the junior heavyweight champion is the wrestler i think you 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 should just start following and that's rising hayato world tag team champions are the saito brothers and oh hikaru sato sorry hikaru sato is dan tamara's partner in the all asia tag team championship team um so that's great that gives me a lot of hope karen that they're gonna just like okay we're gonna focus on our wrestlers we're not gonna send these titles out to outsiders we're not gonna we're not gonna sacrifice our wrestlers our contract wrestlers to outsiders the outsiders should be putting over your guys and I, hopefully they might have learned their lesson with with nakajima who didn't put anyone over in the company except onsai that which yeah. is a good thing but um 
one thing also another great note i have to mention this karen the voodoo murders and taru they're like the all japan version of house of torture they're gone they're, they they're they're not going to be in all japan anymore legit they, are they leaving the company or they were just dissolved yeah because because like no they can leave the company taru just takes the name and they gave it to him and they said you fuck off and don't come back so i hate taru i hate the voodoo murders the Saito brothers have said, well, we're not in Voodoo Murders anymore, so there's no reason for the Voodoo Murders to be in all Japan anymore. Yeah, this said Chase Owens no longer being a tag champion in, in New Japan. Makes me so happy. Um, so, yes, Ren Ayabe, uh, he formally joined All Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, so he he was someone who uh, started off, I believe, in Just Tap Out. So he's a Takamichinoku trainee, and he's been wrestling in, like, other you know, all Japan, maybe in some other promotions. And then they finally said, Hey, why don't you join us? And you know what? I think it's this, this is my, I got my, my notes mixed up. So it is actually Ren Ayabi. His stats, I'm going to read you his stats, Karen. He is 27 years old. Um, he is six feet, seven, six feet and seven inches tall. So that's Good pretty grief. big. And he is 242 pounds. He is in his third year as a wrestler. So Yuma Anzai, Ren Ayabe, Saito Brothers. I'm like, I'll just say this. I'm not a Saito Brothers fan, but they are getting over with the fan base as a tag team. So there you go. Rising Hayato, um, you know, and then of course your established guys, Kento, Yuma. I I feel very strongly that all Japan is 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 going to have a very good 2024 unless the president goes insane and and and, and screws it all up. Let's hope it does not happen. Knock on wood. But yeah, like I like, you know, you get all these like really cool things happening in all Japan. A brand I tried, I so, you know, invest a lot of emotional energy into like, please be good. Please be good. Please don't screw up. Please don't screw up. And, you know, they don't have to have all like great contract wrestlers, but they bring in like, you know, some really talented freelancers to, to, to do some stuff with them. That's that makes it even better. So anyways that's it so we we're we're going to come back in may and we're going to talk about probably some more champions carnival we're going to talk about john moxley being or not being the IWGP champion i'm sure uh, but uh yes karen what what do you have coming up that the people can look forward to listening to all right on saturday night bruce and i will be recording our review of windy city riot and all the fallout that shall be involved therein i will also be writing a report for stardom's uh all-star grand queendom on april 27th as we mentioned earlier in the show and that will, in in as a result, push Dream Slam monthly from the last Saturday of the month to the Sunday, the twenty eighth. Uh, other than that, coming up in May, I'm going to cover the Hanakamura Memorial Show, like I have the last couple of years, and probably more New Japan Stardom in between. <laughs> uh, other than that, yeah. you know, follow me over at postwrestling.com for all and your to... Joshi needs. That's right, chop tees dot com everyone the empress got t-shirt over there can't get I, you can't can, you can't get the orchid color anymore right the Other orchid was a valentine's day to leap day special edition only uh but there is a my signature pastel blue which is my favorite color is readily available and of course for those who love a good black t-shirt sorry uh navy is the closest you're gonna get and i like navy yeah navy Navy looks good on the Listen, people. listen. John John Cena was sporting the Empress shirt all over fucking WrestleMania week. And he said he's very proud picture. of that. He did. He I saw it. And uh, you My know, he, he 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 loves it. he loves that shirt. But and then um, I I okay, for those who don't understand the why I was very against dark colored shirts, is that I live in Florida. So if you, if you wear anything darker than like a medium royal blue or a you know or a, a dark red, you start sweating a lot. So that's why I went with pastel, um, navy, and white. So there you go. I I, I wore black. The girl, maybe they can actually come to a post a post meetup at some point. Yeah. No. What? What? Us going to Florida? I mean, y'all. I mean, I have space in my house. If y'all want to come over here, you don't stay at a murder hotel. 
Hey, you know what? The you know members of the post wrestling universe might take you up on that. Um, but I I do have my own merchandise, of course, as at, at post uh, at at uh, choptees.com. That includes, of course, because the post Perez uh, um, the wave T shirt designed by Robert Pearson. That's up there. You can get that as a as a T shirt. You can get that as a hoodie. I believe also as a zip hoodie. I have to refresh my memory, but if not. Then get the pullover. Uh, long and Winding Road Road. It's all there. Uh, T-shirts, hoodies. The, the 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 five pillars is not available as uh, as a zip hoodie, but the four pillars one is. And of course, uh, MC Later, which I recorded last night. We talked about X Men '97, Rich Fan, Will Cooling, and Scrump. Uh, we had a fantastic conversation about a fantastic episode of X Men '97. I'm looking forward to to next week's episode and, and talking with Rich and our guests, whoever that might be on that show. Uh, but that's all on, that's on the cafe. So you do have to sign up for, for the post wrestling, uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash post wrestling, go look for it. And, uh, yeah, I, I've, I'm going to be recording a new episode of the long and wine row road, Karen with your man, Neil Flanagan. Yay! Uh, and so that will be dropping sometime before the end of April. Oh. Look out for it that and then yeah i'll be back next month with karen uh and yeah check out the patreon the the cat post wrestling cafe for mc later every week of, and then we're once we're done x-men 97 we're gonna straight into the x-men movies leading up to leading up to the the release of deadpool wolverine here in toronto we're gonna have fucking rich fan show up his family, Melissa. You're one of your big fans, Karen, is Melissa fan. I She's love me go. some Melissa fan. I'm a big fan She's of Melissa coming. fan. <laughs> Trey probably coming. John Cena might be coming. Scrub might be coming. We're all going to watch fucking X-Men, fucking Deadpool Wolverine together. It's going to be amazing. But uh, I'm not saying where we're going to watch it because I don't want people like talking to us. I hate that. I hate that. Can't, I can't abide by that. Yeah, no. But anyways, <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for your time again. As always, I appreciate you. And uh, hey, everyone, we're gonna. You know what? We we're gonna have some big fucking content at Post Wrestling from myself, from Karen, from Pollock and Thurston, <laughs> from my man waiting, of course, Brayden Davy, maybe Neil Flanagan. I mean, he's doing the wellness policy with Jordan Goodman and Way. Uh, everyone, Bruce, big Bruce Lord. Everyone, we're gonna we're having a, we're having a fun time here, post wrestling. Great time to jump up for the Patreon or just just tune into the to the YouTube. Okay, those boys are putting out content almost every freaking day. But anyways, Karen, thank you. The listeners, viewers on YouTube, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. And tune in next next month. For Karen and I, as we break down everything happening in the world of ProRes. And until next time, I will see, say goodbye.